Now, all these traumatic childhood memories are outlined in great detail in Holmes's autobiography, but peppered throughout are graphic descriptions of Holmes proudly detailing his childhood sex life, oh. which... If we're being honest, is childhood almost- sex life. I don't know if it's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I is don't- that the term? There's only that's the only way to describe it. Yeah, is childhood I guess sex so. life. And if we're being honest, it's almost exactly how Anthony Kiedis' autobiography starts out as well. Dude, Dude. I was at I was because you know I traveled across the country yeah. for vacation and I overheard a man saying he had a 14 year old daughter. I was in Des Moines. He said, "It's so weird these kids these days. My 14 year old daughter, she's not even interested in sex anymore." <laughs> but he was talking. And I was like, "Wait, <laughs> what?" But I just kind of like I kind of moved on. Yeah, you moved. Done. You move past that. But yeah. But yeah. Anyway, so kids. Uh, no, I lost my virginity at eighteen. Yeah. To a, normal. Yeah, yeah. I did it normal. Just, no too. one wanted to touch it. Yeah. Me there. But, Wait. There's something right. about because again, Anthony Kiedis also lost. Didn't he lose his virginity at like eight, ten uh, he, years old? He, as like eleven, ten or twelve or something like that. But there's yeah. something about like then you see Anthony Kiedis is now fine. No. He was ra- he was raped essentially. You yeah. know what I mean? He was molested. But then somebody oh. else who like but it shows how like talent can really take you in a different direction. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> well, Holmes claimed to have lost his virginity to his babysitter at the age of eight. But most likely, John's loss of innocence came at the hands of a 36-year-old neighbor who sexually abused John at the age of 12 or so when they lived in the Columbus Project. And oh. as was the case up until literally 2005, everyone applauded that. This was funny in this book. In this book that was written, I was being like, I was always a fucking player. Yeah. I oh everybody always fucking wanted me. And it's this it's this yeah. thing where obviously now we know what that called, that's internalized abuse. That's like a thing that's inside of you that you got molested and now you're you you're trying to figure it out in your own fucking head how it makes sense for you. But you know, at the time people were high fiving him. Yeah. You know? Right. Okay. See, John Holmes, like many in the adult film industry, escaped a life of pain and abuse into the world of sex, finding solace, pleasure, and closeness in the act to contrast repeated beatings from a mentally ill six-fingered stepfather. Yeah! (laughs) I'm employed by these six fingers. (laughs) Sounds like Hank Hill's dad. So, in 1960, when John was 16 years old, he joined the army and served his time in Germany. There, he met a guy named Tony from New York. No way! No. <laughs> who would eventually introduce John to the world of sex work. Have you ever heard that? That's why all, you ever heard that old joke? That's why all Italians are named Tony? Why? Well, because they were coming over from Ellis Island. They all had two New York on a shirt. <laughs> that's a real T-Zero-N-Y. I, 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 that's, that's good stuff. Tony. That's good stuff. Hey, man. That's <laughs> real good stuff. That's real good. Some real good Queens humor. Hey, I love that this Queens This is what humor. I provide. Yeah. You, I have a list of big dick jokes. <laughs> Made in a lab. Now, Tony didn't know about John's unusual member until they were out of the army, because John wasn't the type of dude who would flop it out at a moment's notice. Yeah. He, was actually, he had class. He had class. Okay. He was actually somewhat shy about it. <laughs> It was only when John left the army, moved to New York with Tony, and started dating girls in Brooklyn that were got back around to Tony about John's appendage. Yeah, who's you know, so not a problem? He was ashamed. Is Roberto. I'm just looking back at Roberto. <laughs> I'm Roberto looking at, looking at nine, his face. 19 he, entries. He is literally holding it like I'm he is bringing need, a sub to a christening. I am going to need to see it, though. <laughs> i got to see it. Also, they wow. call him, uh, yes. They call mm-hmm. Italians Tony because when they were coming over here, uh, they had they t-shirts that, that said, said to, to New, York. New York. That's <laughs> joke thievery. <laughs> Well, as it turned out, Tony was already working as a gigolo, so he took John under his wing, and both of them started just fucking railing rich old ladies in Manhattan. Wow. Yep. Supposedly, John cleaned up as a gigolo, claiming that he was soon awash in furnished apartments, diamond-studded jewelry, a Mercedes Benz, and more cash than he could possibly spend. That was rich, you see? Yeah. I mean, $150 per ball. That's a lot back then. <laughs> One of his rich clients were so enamored with him, he said, that her lawyers paid John $50,000 to stop railing her and just go away. That is big cock energy. Oh, yeah. Now, from what John claimed, he quite suddenly and for seemingly no reason wanted to give California a shot. But before he left, he gave all his gigolo money to a girl he grew up with named Mary Kay, who seemed to kind of be the Jenny to John's Forrest Gump. Yeah, oh. Forrest Pump. Yeah. <laughs> I, it is interesting because, again, it's from his perspective. Or Forrest I'll, Hump. Yeah, thank you. Forrest Hump. Actually, Forrest, Forrest Glump. Yes. Forrest Clumps of Forrest Dump. Forrest Dump is, again... 
German. Yes. Now, this, he had to go to California. In my mind, what do we know about John Holmes? Is that what are his things that he's truly best known for? Is having a huge cock yes. and being an unrepentant, maybe murderer slash snitch, right? Huh. So he's like a guy that was an entirely unreliable bad person. Yeah. And I imagine that at some point while he was being the so-called super fantastic gigolo that everyone was addicted to, he might have made some bad decisions mm. somewhere into that time period that might have forced him to leave town. Okay. Quite possibly. Yes. Yeah. The way John figured it, he could just make all that money back once he got to California because he was just that goddamn good. That dick ain't going anywhere. I can make my balls fart. <laughs> <laughs> and so he hitchhiked a, to California. A, a boof? <laughs> a, a ball queef? And so he hitchhiked to California and landed on the steps of the older woman he'd lost his virginity to, because apparently they'd kept in touch. Yeah, okay. Now, at first, John went legit. He got a job as an ambulance driver. Possibly through this job, he met his soon-to-be wife, Sharon, who was a nurse at USC County General. Okay. Now, all Sharon knew about John's past was that he was a reasonably charming country boy who was just trying to make it in the big city. And actually, his drive, his driving as an ambulance, his, 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 being an ambulance driver will factor in later on into his trial. Yeah. Because on one side, he said all of this stuff about how when I was an ambulance driver, I saw enough gore for the rest of my life. There is no way huh. I would have ever been involved in these murders. Yeah. And then later on, he would just be like, he was black, but like, whatever. You know, like, yeah. it's all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Well, John's soon-to-be wife, Sharon, had no idea that just a few months earlier, John had been a gigolo in New York City. Likewise, she also had no knowledge of John's unusual appendage until the night of their marriage, Jesus which happened Christ. just five months after they met. I mean, uh, hey, there's worse things that could happen. Can, can yeah. you imagine being with me for like a couple years and that night I'm like, honey. I'm a comedian for the very first time. <laughs> oh, that's like that's nah. not a nine inch. That's not an <laughs> that's eleven mine. inch dick. That yeah, is the only thing I have. That's a whole other thing. Well, reportedly, when John's talent was unfurled in their wedding chamber, Sharon was said to have muttered, "Oh dear." <laughs> She's what, she's fucking British? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine she was that upset. No. But who knows? Oh, dear. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of women don't like a penis that big. Like, you know what it is about it truly? If you're not expecting it, because there's difference, right? Eight, nine incher. Well, you know, let's yeah. really get in the nitty gritty. I, yeah, let's get in the nitty gritty. Yeah. Eight, nine incher. You're you're like, wow, great. Wonderful. Right? I'm certain. I'm Wonderful. sure. Right? You're like, who knows? Ooh, fantastic. Yeah. Eight, nine incher. Absolutely. I would imagine like women say like, I get what you're saying. There's but a, like 13 inches. It's insane. It's just like. There's a lid for every pot because sometimes people have small vagines. <laughs> yes. And they don't mind a small peen. But sometimes women have larger vagines. And they like a big old peen. But this woman didn't know what her vagine capacity was. Well, no, she, I know. <laughs> and that's maximum capacity. That yeah. is like, that's like, you're just jumping. It was like, you know, when I lied to that movie set about how I could ride like a scooter. Oh, right? Like, what right. if instead of them showing up with a scooter, oh, they showed up with a Harley? <laughs> I'd go, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. You got no. To, didn't you get to kiss Sharon Stone? I did. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Dude. And when it comes to that massive penis we've been talking about so much. <laughs> it is unavoidable. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's what he's, it's the only reason why we're talking about this man. True. If he was just involved in a drug-related murder and he was just some dude, we wouldn't know who he is. Yeah. But sure. because he's John Holmes, he's got the big dick and we got to talk about hey, it. There hey, you go. hey, you know, again, we're not leaving anything on the floor here. We're really... We do everything we can. Mm -hmm. Tip of his penis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he himself actually included a bit of an instruction manual in his autobiography for all you big dickers out there. <laughs> yeah, come on, you long dongers. Yeah. We know that a lot of people don't have a heck of a lot of, like, you know, consideration for you because you suck. <laughs> but this is important for you to know. <laughs> it is important for you to know. Henry will now read uh, the instructions yep. for big dickers. I had developed my technique as a teenager because of my size. It was during those years that, because of my size, <laughs> I had to go slower and to spend more time on foreplay than other guys did. Oh. If I just jumped in the saddle, I caused a woman pain. So I learned to take my time with extended foreplays to make her more receptive to me. My rule of thumb became, when a woman pulls me to her, she was sufficiently lubricated to receive me. I learned, too, that while a flat, muscular stomach may appeal to a woman visually, a slight bit of a stomach is more exciting in bed. 
It's because even the slightest punch adds friction and stimulation to the pubic area. Therefore, the more padding around a man's stomach, the more he will stimulate his partner. <laughs> Which is actually from All my right. mouth. <laughs> yeah, I love Unless I that. Been the very end. Yeah, very the, the punch. The punch is better for uh, sex. I've been saying it for years. Dad bods are better at it. <laughs>